Hello, participants of the weekend. Welcome to the Tube's weekend edition. Yes, it's time to go back to the stories that made our week and dig their holes even deeper. Let's drill. With me with the digging shovels are the Tube's team, Shai Ringel, Yaron Tenbrink. How was your week, boys? Uh, it was uh, a complicated week, but uh, during the week I discovered that 2015 was declared by some mm -hmm. as the year of the vagina. And I'm very, very happy about that. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, but I think it's a good idea. Who I support was the, it. I support those it. some who declared it? Fashion magazines and Kim Kardashian has a new photo with the... Starring her vagina, it's it's a it's a basically. A How was your week, Shai? I, I, it was okay. It's not the wake of the vagina, but <laughs> it was okay. I, I don't know. Okay, let's start our show. Yeah. It was a big week for lovers of all things internet. Throughout 2014, we've been talking about net neutrality. That's the ability of the internet to treat all content equally and to forbid internet for, uh, providers from adding a pay-per-use premium content layer to the web. FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler revealed his plan to reclassify internet service providers as common carriers under Title II of the Telecommunication Act. That means that internet will be considered as a utility, so companies can't change the way it works. Before diving into the subject, here's a quick reminder from College Humor about net neutrality and the fight for internet rights. Hi, I'm Adam. And I'm Emily. We make funny videos on the internet. But soon, we might not be able to. That's because net neutrality is in jeopardy. Net neutrality is the principle that says that ISPs, you know, these assholes, can't discriminate between different types of traffic. That means that whether you're a bedroom music producer, a couple with an amateur porn site, or just someone with a great startup idea. It's like Dropbox for your food. Great idea. Hope it works out. You get access to the same users as Netflix, Facebook, and Amazon. On the internet, anyone can succeed. But America's ISPs want to set up a pay-for-play system where rich companies pay extra to get to those users first. Flix. All right, puff it up. I didn't really bring my wallet. Back of the line. Huh? Let's go. If this happens, instead of the wonderful playground of innovation it is now, the internet will become like cable TV, where you can only get stuff that's been pre-approved by a bunch of old rich guys. Older rich guys. So did the older rich guy, uh, guys lose? You know, that's it. Internet is safe and free for all, forever? Yes, the, well, they lost, obviously. Uh, the FCC's... Uh, upcoming ruling will be exactly what we all wanted it to be. Uh, internet is like water. If mm -hmm. you are a supplier of water, you cannot decide that you'll have water for rich people and poor people. So the internet is basically the same. That's the ruling. That's what everybody was fighting for this last year. Mm -hmm. But for your other question, I think the answer is no. I mean, uh, there is a thing with rich, old, white guys that they don't lose very easily. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, I mean, we've won this battle, but the <coughs> war will keep just going and they will try, like the big companies, the, the big internet providers, will try and find other ways to do it and will try and fight this decision, for well, sure. Well, you know, talking of water, there is a difference between poor people's water and rich people's water in, in the end of the day. Yeah, but not when it comes out of, out of the faucet. I mean, mm -hmm. rich people can buy better water, mm -hmm. but uh, the utility itself is the same for everybody and the water that flows through the public uh, uh, pipe system mm -hmm. is the same water and that's the idea with net neutrality. All the internet is the same, there is no premium internet. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you think of the, were you surprised by this ruling? Because for me I was kind of indifferent to the whole story. I have my internet and yay I still have my internet. Yeah, I have to say I'm, I was really surprised, especially what the internet has to suffer in the last year, where uh, Netflix is a really good example for it because Netflix had to pay a lot of money to big ISP companies in the United States in order to get its material to the user. Uh, and when they didn't pay, the ISP companies really shut down the pipe. Uh, and you could see it really, um, uh, um, you could see a lot of times where companies wanted to succeed and the ISP were uh, in their way and now maybe this new ruling will stop that 
But as Yaron says, uh, rich white guys don't quit that easily. The Republican Party is now standing on the other side of the equation, and a lot of uh, people who are was who were supported supposed uh, supported by a lot of those telecommunication companies will try to uh, make the ruling different to change mm -hmm. that ruling. The ruling hasn't been made yet. We have to remember that Tom Wheeler uh, said in an interview he will make the ruling at the end. We have so it's not a final. Month. Yeah, but my question it's uh, maybe on the larger scale and shortly. I mean, it's 20 years already that people are talking about uh, regulating the internet. Will it ever end? Will there be regulations and that's it? Uh, I don't think so, because the in internet keeps evolving, mm -hmm. and every time it evolves, it needs new regulations, and there are new discussions about who makes the most money from it. Uh, so basically, we're gonna keep, we're gonna have to keep fighting to maintain the internet as it is today, as a free platform for all. That will, you know, they will keep fighting that. They will keep trying to make the internet something different, something more profitable. Okay, now the next story is especially for you, Yaron. Thank You're you. going to love it. Yeah. Uh, well, careful what you say around your TV, it may be listening. A single sentence buried in a dense privacy policy for Samsung's internet-connected smart TV advises users that its nifty voice command feature might capture more than just requests to play episodes of Grey's Anatomy. The smart TV not only records everything it hears, apparently it also might make it accessible for third parties such as advertisers. If that's not enough, users of Samsung Smart TV discovered that their smart screen is inserting ads into movies. What's going on? Is Samsung TV evil? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, one sentence, like if I have to choose one word, the, the answer is yes, because, uh, you know, uh, we all know that smart devices listen to us, okay? But do they have really to record everything we say? Do they have to share it with third parties? The answer is an absolute no. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want anything in my living room to record everything. And, of course, not... Uh, 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 use it with uh, other like third parties. That's like a complete disaster for Samsung. They're already revisiting this uh, guideline for their users. Uh, I don't think any user would want his TV to do that. And inserting uh, 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 advertisements into movies. What does that even mean? That means that your machine is smart enough to know that you're watching a movie mm -hmm. and it will find a point to break the movie and insert you, uh, insert uh, an advertisement. Uh, an advertisement that was not there originally because you're watching it either on VOD or uh, uh, streaming or any other method. The people who reported the same advertisements said they owned the movie. That means you paid for the movie, you came and watched it, and the television itself, not the service, the television itself, uh, uh, stop the movie, stop the show movie you showed yeah. you a Pepsi commercial mm -hmm. and continued the movie. Uh, Samsung said it was a mistake. It only happened in Australia. They are really sorry about it, but the fact that the technology is there means that uh, someone developed it for the uh, television. It just got maybe a little bit too early. And, you know, Samsung TV is probably an evil product. But, is everybody, do it. It, but is, is everybody doing it and Samsung's were the first one to get caught? Or is no. it really... No? The, the advertisement thing has never been done before. It's a complete break from everything we know about uh, advertisement in content. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you go to watch a movie in the cinema, so you know you'll have a few advertisements before the movie that pays for some of but the ticket price. someone read all the manuals of all the rec potentially recording new futuristic gadgets that might no, be in your home? No, of course not, of course not. Uh, what, what's happening now is that we have this idea of Internet of Things, that mm -hmm. means our gadgets at home are becoming smart and they can communicate with each other, but they can communicate with us. And because most of them, a lot of them are voice activated mm -hmm. or want to be voice activated, they also have the power to listen to us. And I think this is an area which hasn't been covered so far because nobody really thought about the ramifications of uh, machines around you listening to you and be being able to record you and being able to share this 
recording with like an advertiser or you know the government or whoever mm -hmm. so that that's uh, a completely new invasion into your privacy and might it actually affect uh, Samsung uh, sales or something I don't know if it will affect its sales it would definitely affect its PR which is really big big for Samsung Samsung mm -hmm. really works hard and puts a lot of money into its uh, uh, PR. So damage was done. Yeah, exactly. Okay, too Definitely. bad Samsung, you deserve it. Now, Twitter is cool. It is so cool that now some tweets are getting their own series. Loosely based on uh, Behind the Music, the highly rated 60 to 90 uh, minute biography doc series that began on music video station VH1 back in 1997. Back in the day, behind the tweet is compacted into two to three minute webisodes that focus on a particularly controversial tweet, then dissects them with the participation of the tweeter and a VH1 host. So let's watch a clip from this show before we ask if Twitter is so darn cool, why are so few using it? The comedy duo Key and Peele are no strangers to controversy even when it comes to imitating the most powerful man in the world. I'm the leader of the free world. I don't cons like to call them impressions. I open up my body and the soul of something else enters my body. In this case, it's uh, the President of the United States. But when Peel released a shocking tweet about what really went down with one of their most popular sketches, the duo really began to feel the heat. For probably the first time in history, white America was feeling left out of something. And as we all know, white people are sore losers. Babies, really. They're still rioting in the streets. When Key and Peele were cast together on Mad TV over a decade ago, they never dreamed their friendship would lead to a hit TV show of their own. But it was their Obama handshake sketch that would elevate their work to a whole new level. Key and Peele, man. So, uh, I mean, we can talk about the show a lot, but let's not talk about the show. Let's talk about the fact that Twitter, you know, um, uh, on its face, it has it all, okay? It has the biggest celebrities, uh, huge scoops, uh, mega gossip things happening there. Now they even have a TV show. But something is r not really working there, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I think I think Twitter is kind of looks like to the average user, like a closed uh, club mm -hmm. uh, where, where only really funny people that are very eloquent and can write beautifully in 140 uh, uh, letters. You know, th th this whole idea is very, very frightening to some people. And, Even to me. And the way, the way Twitter works, that you don't have friends, it's people follow you. And if you follow someone, he doesn't have to follow you back. Mm -hmm. So that makes it into kind of a popularity contest. And if you don't have many followers, then you're not really a user because who cares what you said? Nobody knows what you said. Yeah, that's the big difference between Twitter and Facebook. Facebook is for your friends and other people, but mainly for your friends and making friends. And Twitter is about being a, a media itself. Mm -hmm. Like you are the media, you are the one who publish it, uh, publish scoops, publish jokes, publish your thoughts, and people will respond to you, but you can become like your own newspaper. But it's only a problem if people think it's supposed to be something else. Why can't it be a really cool news and entertainment outlet internet magazine? Because it's also a social network and, and, and it doesn't say like, listen, you're, you don't write well enough, you can't join. Everybody can join. And because it is so uh, uh, vivid inside the media itself, media is constantly reporting about things happening in Twitter, it's kind of, you know, it, it draws people in, but then they feel like they cannot participate. That's a serious problem. Yeah. And we've seen even Instagram passing Twitter in their number of users. So I think Twitter has a real, real but Instagram Probably. is an interesting uh, uh, comparison because my life or the average person's life cannot be as interesting as Rihanna's life, yeah. but still they're, they're sharing their photos on Instagram. So what's working there that's not working in Twitter? Because you still have the same problem on making quality content. Yeah, but Instagram makes it easier where, while Twitter makes it harder to make quality content. That, that's the big difference. Instagram has its filters. It's really nice and cool and very easy to make beautiful photography. Twitter, it's very hard to... Uh, to make a good tweet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's... I got it. So maybe they should attach a, you know, a little editor. 
Yeah, so the, yeah that's okay, a good idea, okay. actually. Okay, I have the rights now. It seems like we missed one of the most viral videos of the week, which is basically a strange dance-off with Owl. So we want to make it right. So here it is, Dance Owl Dance. I'm coming through like the morning you don't have I'm flipping from the right then I'm flipping from the left This beat Owls! Yay! Okay, that's it. The show is over. Thank you very much, Shai. Thank you very much, Yaron. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back on Monday with a brand new show. Twitter, Tumblr, The Tube 24. And always remember, carry out a random act of kindness with no expectation of reward, safe in the knowledge that one day someone might do the same for you. That's Princess Di. Goodbye. Monday, weekend. Bye.